From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Monday, September 4th, 2023. X to collect member employment data. The application, formerly known as Twitter, is now offering a new service to its ex-premium members, the collection of a selfie photo and employment and educational history with consent. According to the X privacy policy update, this is to, quote, recommend potential jobs for you to share with potential employers when you apply for a job, end quote. This may indicate a desire on the part of X to move into territory largely dominated by LinkedIn, especially in light of its purchase last May of a tech recruiting service called Lasky. Technical details of Sandworm malware infamous Chisel released. Security agencies from the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance, that's the US, the UK, New Zealand, Canada and Australia, have released technical information of malware named Infamous Chisel, used by the Russian hacking group Sandworm as part of the war effort against Ukraine. The malware focuses on Android devices used by members of the Ukrainian military and was designed to collect intelligence. Largely searching for files with .jpg or .txt extensions, infamous Chisel is considered in the report as, quote, low to medium sophistication, giving little thought to avoiding detection, end quote. However, CyberScoop points out that since many Android devices do not have a host-based detection system, there are few ways to monitor the Android devices for malicious behavior. Golf club maker Callaway suffers breach. The breach occurred about one month ago, and golf equipment maker Top Golf Callaway says this resulted in the personal and account data of more than a million customers being exposed, including account passwords and answers to security questions. The notice also specifies that, quote, no payment card information, government ID or social security numbers were exposed, end quote. Customers are now being redirected to a reset password page. No mention of a cause has been made public other than describing the event as a, quote, IT incident, end quote. The company has stated that additional security measures are being put in place to prevent a reoccurrence. Windows WordPad to be retired after 28 years. WordPad, a word processing app that sat somewhere between the Microsoft Word and Notepad on the Windows platform, quote, is no longer being updated and will be removed in a future release of Windows, end quote. This per a Microsoft deprecated features announcement made Friday. Bleeping Computer adds that, quote, while not tagged by Redmond as the reason for discontinuing WordPad, earlier this year, the QBot malware operation also started infecting computers and evading detection by abusing a DLL hijacking flaw in the Windows 10 WordPad app, end quote. And now a word from our sponsor, Comcast. Data is the currency of the 21st century, yet for so many cybersecurity professionals, it's still too difficult to access, correlate, and use this currency for better, faster security and compliance decision-making. That's why Comcast Technology Solutions created DataBee, a cloud-native security data fabric platform that can help you turn your security data into valuable business currency. You can learn more at Comcast slash Databee, that is C-O-M-C-A dot S-T slash Databee, D-A-T-A-B-E-E. Look also for a link on our show notes page at the Comcast sponsor site. NIST publishes a new draft of cybersecurity and privacy learning program. As an update to the 2003 version, this document intends to provide guidance on, quote, building a cybersecurity and privacy learning program, end quote. Included within the goals of this update are, quote, to integrate privacy with cybersecurity in the development of organization-wide learning programs, end quote, and also, quote, to introduce a life cycle model that allows for ongoing iterative improvements and changes to accommodate cybersecurity, privacy, and organization-specific events, end quote. A public comment period is open until October 27th of this year. Children's online safety laws blocked in Texas and Arkansas. Two federal judges have granted preliminary injunctions blocking the passage of two child safety laws. 
The Social Media Safety Act is an Arkansas law that would prevent children from creating accounts on large social media apps without parental permission. And the Texas law is intended to keep children from, quote, accessing content that is made for adults, end quote. According to The Record, quote, the tech industry trade group NetChoice, which represents Google, Meta, and TikTok, among others, sued in June to block the law on the grounds that it is unconstitutional and would place an onerous burden on digital platforms, end quote. In his ruling, U.S. District Judge Timothy Brooks stated that the law as placed was, quote, not targeted to address the harms it has identified, end quote, and he also suggests that age gating is not effective and that the law, quote, ignores experts' views that parental oversight is what is really needed to insulate children from potential harms that lurk on the Internet, end quote. Companies using software to track remote workers. An article in Business Insider highlights how certain companies are using keystroke monitoring software to track remote workers' time on the keyboard, resulting in dismissals when a required number of keystrokes per hour is not achieved. Named in the story are large companies like J.P. Morgan and Tesla. The story also quotes an earlier New York Times story that showed that eight of the ten largest U.S. private companies track their employees' productivity. This story also refers to a Business Insider article from October 2022, which points out that, quote, not turning your webcam on for a work meeting may get people fired with little chance of winning a wrongful termination claim, end quote. And now, last week in ransomware. The Chambersburg Area School District in southern Pennsylvania announced last week that it would stay open despite an attack that is yet to be confirmed as ransomware, and similarly, the University of Michigan says it has restored its systems following an attack last weekend. Clothing retailer Forever 21 has filed reports of a breach that affected current and former employees, but has not confirmed whether ransomware was involved. We also reported last week on breaches, again, not necessarily ransomware, affecting a French government employment agency, the offices of Montreal's electrical infrastructure, and movie giant Paramount. Remember, we're hosting a meetup in Arlington, Virginia, next Friday, September the 8th. It's happening at the Bronson Beer Hall from 5 to 7 p.m., so stop by and say hi after work. We would love to see you there. For more information, click on our events page over at CISOseries.com. And have you ever wanted to hear what goes on when a CISO talks to a vendor? Well, that is why we created Capture the CISO. It's a unique competition show where CISOs watch vendor demos and you get to hear what questions they have. And it's hosted by our own Rich Struffolino. All of our competitors are sponsors, so if you are interested in learning more, contact us at info at CISOseries.com. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.